Hi everyone, this is a video that I have been wanting to do for quite some time now and today being a lazy Sunday morning, everyone's sleeping, it's all quiet, I thought this is the perfect time to do it. The first thing that you will notice is that above me, the name of the game is Karthik Venkat Raman vs D. Gukesh. This happened at the National uh, Delhi Open recently. But the pictures of the players is Gukesh and Anish Giri. Why? Well, as you might have guessed from the title of this video, it's what Guki, Gukesh is lovingly called by people who are his friends or family as Guki, learned from Giri. Okay, so let's have a look at the game first. This is Karthik Venkat Raman versus Gukesh. I love this game and there's so much to learn from it. But there's also another game that we will see later. And let's begin. D4 by Karthik, Knight F6 by Gukesh, C4, E6, Knight F3, D5, Queen's Gambit declined. G3, we see the Catalan on the board and Gukesh gives a check. Bishop D2 and he plays this interesting line. One way is now to go back on E7, provoking the bishop. The other line is A5. It's a well-known line. Bishop G2, you castle. And now castling is, a, is one of the main moves. White played queen c2. So, Gukesh now said, well, you are slowing down your development a bit. You are not castling. Uh, let me strike in the center. Again, theory, c takes d5. And now you take c takes d4. So, the point is very clear. If you were to take on e6, then I will take back. My pawn will be defended with the queen. So, logically, white takes with the knight. And now, Gukesh attacks the queen with queen to b6 e3 to defend the knight pawn takes pawn castles knight came out on c6 putting pressure on d4 so white took pawn takes and now knight came out to c3 so if we take stock of this position we realize that uh, black has more space because of his pawn on d5 but at the same time, he has more weaknesses. C6 is weak. Knight can go from A4 to C5. The C5 square could be weak. So actually, white's position looks very interesting. But now, Gukesh played a move that I want you to guess. It may not be the only move in the position, but it's an idea which you should keep in your mind always. What should black play here? Okay. Uh, the first thing that you will notice is that white wants to create queen side play like rook c1 knight a4 b3 attack c6 put the knight on c5 and so on so what should you do should you keep on defending there no you should create your own play and that's why the move here h5 this is the move that i was looking for now what you want to do is you want to soften up this king side structure with h4 but there's even something more to it Knight a4, he went back queen d8. Now, the, one of the points is that you can't take on c6 because of bishop d7, defending the a8 rook. And next move, I'll take on d2. Then I will take on a4. Uh, I will be a piece up. So you can't take that point. Also, if you were to take, let's say, here, here, and then take here, then bishop d7, double attack, and you will lose a piece. Here rook fc1 was played, and this is not a good move. The better move would have been h3 to meet h4 with g4, or to play h4 when you are sort of blocking the h pawn. But rook fc1 was played here, and now... Uh, Gukesh continued, what would you play here? Of course, if you say A, you must say B, H4. The pawn was pushed. Bishop takes, pawn takes, and B3 was played. Now it's your move. Notice that he has created a threat to take on C6. What would you do in this position? <clears throat> the right move here is very nice h3 and this move just put it in your head because let's say after bishop h1 
this pawn is the hero of this entire story. You will see it coming again and again in the, all the variations, back rank issues, limiting the bishop, mating threats on g2, a lot. But the next move that Gukesh played, he took two minutes to play it and I was simply amazed with this move. And I, I think Gukesh would not have been able to do it if he hadn't seen the game of Anish Giri before. So the move that he played here, and you can guess what did he do? So the natural you know option could be bishop d7 knight c5 and bishop e8 okay you are passive but you have defended c6 kukesh here played rook to b8 and i was like wow what why the point is that if you take on c6 gukesh now wants to play what black to play yes d4 he wants to break in the center. He wants to open up the position because he is a piece up. Now, why do I say piece up? Well, firstly, his white knight is slightly out of the game. More importantly, there is this pawn on h3, which is like a piece in the position. Also very interesting to note is that Gukesh could have tried playing d4 here itself, but Till the pawn exists on c6, he doesn't want to play d4 <clears throat> because then his bishop doesn't get this open diagonal. So what he does is that he lures white to take this pawn, pushes d4 and then after uh, <clears throat> queen c5 was played here by Karthik after 11 minutes of thought, I analyzed another move. Let's say if you take on d4, what happens? Okay, you play bishop b7, he goes queen c7, you take. Now, if you take with the king, it's game over, right? Because queen d5 check and you get checkmated. The power of this pawn can be seen. So, you take on queen uh, on d8. I take back king h1. And it seems like how can black even be better here? You know, what's the reason? He's a pawn down. Queens have been traded. But let's say after rook d1, rook d8, knight b2, rook d2. And this position, dear friends, is very much better for black. The point is that this king is limited by this pawn and my knight will jump in. It can go to c3 to f2. It's a deadly, deadly attack. So even in the end game, the benefits of that pawn are to be seen. Okay, another variation. Let's say he goes rook to d1, pinning the pawn. We still go bishop b7. You have to go back. I take here. Now, if you take on d4, rook takes d4, then you lose a piece after bishop d5. I come back and I'm piece up. So, you have to take on uh, h1. Now, I play, let's say, queen e7. Just moving my queen away because I know d4 is hanging. You have two ways to take. If you take queen takes d4, I have queen b7 check, which is already winning problems. So you take with the rook. I still give you a check. You play e4. And now a little bit of tactical awareness. Black to play. What do you do? Very nice. Take. Rook takes. Now you would have loved to play f5, but just that it's not possible. There's a pin here. So what do you do now? Rook f8, excellent move. N notice that rook b8 would be a blunder because of queen takes b4. b4 pawn has to be defended. So rook f8, move, uh, forcing the queen to move away and then playing f5 and you are winning. So you will see that in all lines, this pawn plays a crucial role. Okay, so now that you understand this concept, it's like, you know, you've put that pawn in here the only piece that is covering these weaknesses is this bishop. So the point is to tell the king, queen, come, take this pawn and then exchange this bishop with this bishop so that the light squares are weak. What a brilliant concept, isn't it? Queen c5 and now, uh, well, Gukesh here could have gone queen d3 uh, and slightly anti-intuitive because after queen e3, it looks like uh, white is okay, but you know the move here. 
black to play yes exchange that powerful important bishop bishop b7 and after takes takes let's say knight c5 you have queen d5 threatening a mate f3 rook b7 and then the rook is coming in <coughs> once again over <laughs> Okay, but uh, Gukesh went d3. Interesting move. But it kind of stabilizes the position a bit. Bishop g4 was uh, possible. Let's say f3. Bishop comes back. Queen d4. Takes. And even this way, if you give up like a couple of pawns, you can still play this position. That was also possible to play. But now Gukesh, after deep thought, 15 minutes, played bishop b7. And Karthik here could have taken, taken rook a c1, knight e4, queen d4, queen takes uh, d4, e takes d4, d2, rook c2. I just analyzed this line, rook e8, f3, knight to g5, king f2, rook e7, rook takes d2 and rook e3. And as we see once again, this pawn is the one that keeps black alive, actually gives him a very good position. F3 is hanging, knight F3 can come in, H2 will fall. Uh, but this was the best defense here to take here. I understand Karthik's uh, move here, F3. After we have seen all the light square weaknesses, he's like, let me uh, kind of consolidate my position here. But it's not consolidating in the in fact his bishop becomes very bad and gukesh takes full advantage of it rook e8 e4 bishop a6 rook d2 rook c8 and now uh, queen takes b4 if queen b6 you notice that i'm not really afraid of uh, queen trade rook d1 takes takes and now i go here <coughs> king f2 and once again trapped I don't want to repeat, but you get my drift, yes? Okay. So, queen takes b4 was played in the game. Rook came in. Rook d1. Queen c7. Rook f2. And now, black to play. How did Gukesh continue? You know, white wants to set up some kind of a queen going back. Then maybe rook coming up. He just is holding on. He's couple of pawns up. But this next move is beautiful. Knight to d5. A very classy move. And the point is if you take. I take on f2. King takes. Check. If you play queen d2. I have rook e2. Winning the game. So rook d2. Again a check. You take. Queen takes. King g1. Check. And d2. And d queen e1 is coming up. d1 is coming up. <coughs> So queen e1 was played and now Gukesh pinned it, pinned it here. There's a pin here. It's also attack here. A3. Well, the hope is if ever you can get b4 and knight c5. But that's a long way off. Uh, here Gukesh finished it off with a flourish. He went rook e2. And Karthik resigned because queen f1 is met with knight e3. The queen is trapped. Well, not really trapped, but you lose material. Finally, you can get rid of the pawn, which has been your huge enemy, but you lose everything. So that pawn was such a massive piece. Okay, so that was the game. And look, let's look at the game between Vidit and Anish Giri, which they played in 2020. It was, I think, a practice match on Chess24. And... It's so interesting because the opening was absolutely the same. Everything was the same. Castles, queen c2, c5, takes, takes. Everything that happened in Gukesh's game happened here. And now Vidit played rook c1. And there we had a different position. But look at this. Anish went rook b8. Now, Anish is saying if Vidit you take here, I will take on d2. And then eventually I will capture the pawn on b2. So with it goes knight c3, h5, we know it, queen d8. Be my guest, please take here, your piece is hanging at the end. So take, rook takes, 
B3 with it saves it. Clearly expecting Anish to save his pawn, but Anish is like, no, I'm not saving it. Queen deck C6, H3, Bishop H1. And guys, this is what makes this unbelievable. Anish played this entire concept of H5, H4, H3, followed by D4. I have to ask Anish at some point whether he learned it from someone or he came up with it in his preparation or whether he came up with it on the board. But clearly Gukesh absorbed this in and he, this was an online game that was played in 2020 and uh, just Queen E8, it was, um, it was an interesting game. In fact, uh, a lot of things happened, but eventually uh, Anish won, but it just goes to show that if you are an ambitious chess player, if you are someone who wants to become one of the best in the world like Gukesh wants, then you have to keep your eyes open for all the games that are happening anywhere and to kind of absorb these concepts. It's not just about lines. It's not theory, guys. It's about playing a move like h5. It's about playing this pawn to h4 and then later on pushing it into h3, absorbing that when to break d4. This is all execution. But you know that rook b8 first, let him capture, then push the pawn. And that's why, dear friends, I say that this is something that Guki learned from Giri. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Sagar Shah signing off. Bye-bye.